true to form, it is hot pink. Hey guys, I'm Kristen, also known as Bull and Vine here on my YouTube channel, on Ravelry, on Instagram, where I'm most active when it comes to social media, and pretty much everywhere else on the interwebs. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about all the knitting, all the sewing, all the making, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. And just a heads up, this is not the normal format of the of the YouTube channel. I usually post a video every Friday, uh, sharing what I've been making, what I've been knitting on, sewing, and, and the like. Uh, however, this is going to be a recap of the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. I took a couple weeks off to travel to Scotland and attend the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, and then I took a, another week uh, where I went on vacation with my husband to Paris, France, and that's pretty much going to be the gist of this episode. And of course, I will be sharing my haul from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. So I, if you are into that type of thing, I know many of you yarnies out there love, love seeing yarn hauls from yarn festival so if that's what you're into you're you're in you're in good company but yeah without further ado uh i guess i will get into what i brought back with me from scotland and france uh but first just a quick word from my amazing sponsor skillshare Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, tech, and more, even sewing and the fiber arts. As you probably know, I love learning new things when it comes to knitting, sewing, photography, or whatever crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down, which is why I'm all about binge watching classes on Skillshare. And because I know you love learning new things too, I partnered up with Skillshare and they are offering you, my viewers, two months free to try their platform. So give Skillshare a go and learn something new. Just click the link in the description box below and enter the code at checkout. Enjoy, and thanks Skillshare. And welcome back. All right, where, I really don't know where to begin. I have, <laughs> uh, I came back with quite, quite the haul, uh, something I was not expecting or intending to do. I was just going for the friends, the fiber, maybe some haggis. Okay, so just to give you a little perspective as to what my game plan was for purchasing yarn at EYF this year, um, I didn't have any specific booths that I wanted to hit up. I wasn't planning on bringing, you know, planning on a large haul or a small haul. I was just gonna go see what I saw. Um, and that would be that. But I did know, I did make a rule for myself, no fiber, because let's face it, my, my spinning mojo has been pretty non-existent for quite some time. Um, however, before I left, I realized that my stash was sorely lacking in a lot of uh, worsted iron weight yarns. Um, and I did want some more sweater quantities. So I decided, okay, if I do buy something, it's gonna be a sweater's quantity worth. Um, and either worsted weight or iron weight yarn or chunky, whatever I saw, and something that I could not easily get in the United States. So that was my game plan. Those were my, you know, guidelines that I was loosely following, you know, because you know, sometimes you see something and you just wanna take it home. So, uh, yeah, oh, and, and no project bags. But uh, the first day I arrived, I was not intending on, because I was arriving in the morning, I knew that I would be super tired and I would just wanna go to my hotel room, maybe take a nap, freshen up, uh, because that night, uh, which was, I think, it was Thursday. So I flew out from New York on Wednesday night and then I arrived um, Thursday morning. And, you know, try as I might, I cannot fall asleep on planes. Um, although I did manage to get maybe about three solid hours of sleep in and out, give or take. I don't know. It just, but I did arrive and I was super tired and uh, I arrived at my ho hotel and of course my, my room was not ready. It would not be ready until three o'clock that, that afternoon. So I had quite a lot of time to kill. Um, and unfortunately I did not have a place to freshen up. Uh, but I, you know, the hotel was so nice that they took care of my, my luggage while, I did whatever it is I wanted to do with my morning. So um, what what do you do? Um, you know, you, you go to a yarn festival, uh, hang out with yarny friends and surround yourselves with fiber and hope hope for the best. Hope that that will make everything okay. Um, so yeah, I texted my friends. I said, hey, change of plans. I am coming to the yarn festival this morning. I will meet you there. Just gonna grab some food. Um, and yeah, I met up and with 
who was it at first? Uh, I ran into Falula, who's Carly, Rachel, who is Rewarding Memories on Instagram, uh, and then I met up with Hannah, who is the Corner of Craft, uh, and who else? Who else is there? Um, I think those are the first first people that I ran into. Um, and then Dragon Horde Yarns and uh, Christy, Christine and Tristan, um, Tristan from Dragon Horde Yarns and uh, Christy, is it Christine or Christy? I'm so sorry. She's from Yarn Cafe Creations and was so awesome to meet them for the first time. They are from the States as well uh, and they have the Yarn Cafe, ugh, I'm so bad with names, but I will pop it in the doobly-doo down here. Um, but it was so great to meet them for the very first time. They are awesome. They're mother and daughter and they have a podcast together and they both dye yarn, but they have two separate yarn companies. Anyway, it was really great to meet up with them. Um, and then Isabel Kramer came out of nowhere and I totally fangirled. <laughs> and yeah, um, I just felt a little silly because my I had literally no, I had makeup on, but it was like from the day before, my hair was all lank and my face was all shiny and I don't know why I felt the need to, I wasn't apologizing, but I felt the need to explain my state um, of, I don't know. I was just like, I am a hot mess right now. I apologize for all this that's happening. I'm tired and I'm straight from the airport. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know that really didn't matter at the end of the day. But anyway, I just I felt the need to explain the fact that why I looked or felt so disheveled and yeah, I, I needed to deplane if that makes any sense. I just proceeded to uh, soak up all the fiber fumes and enjoy enjoy the day. Uh, yeah, so um, all right, so I think that is enough backstory. Let's get into what, uh, enough enough rambling. Let's get into what I've actually purchased from the festival. So my very first purchase that I got, and this is not gonna be in chronological order by any means, um, but I will I will do my best. But I just remembered this was my very first purchase from the yarn festival. Um, and it is a project bag. <laughs> and it says Floof Hunter. And it has a cat with chasing a yarn ball, and um, this is by Yarnistry. And I actually heard of these guys through uh, Hannah of the Corner of Craft. She always talks about them on her podcast, and always shows off. They they do really cute stitch markers and like a lot of laser cut glittery things, and they have really awesome project bags. This may or may not glow in the dark. I haven't tried it yet, but it might. Um, and true to form, true to form, it is hot pink. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, um, I highly suggest that you check out uh, Caroline Dunderknits, the host of the Knitting Vicariously podcast. She posted a video called The Spare Stitch Project, which if you have not checked out yet, I highly recommend that you do. I'll, I'll pop it in the doobly-doo up here. Um, that's all I'm gonna say. Go check it out if you haven't already. But yeah, guys, hot pink, I mean, so yeah, you'll remember that one of the guidelines was no fiber. Um, but when one walks past the Spin City UK booth, one cannot help but stop, drop, and admire. Uh, because uh, Louise, who is the, the woman behind uh, all the gorgeousness that is Spin City UK, um, you know, she was there and I said hello. Um, and yeah, she makes these amazing drop spindles. And if you've been following the podcast for some time, I... Uh, I want to say like four or five years ago, I was I was living in Greenpoint at the time. I remember this, but um, I had purchased a drop spindle for my niece Juliana um, because she expressed an interest in spinning, and uh, I thought that Spin City UK, she, her spindles are just so fun and glittery and sparkly. Uh, Juliana would get a total kick out of it. So um, I had purchased a spindle from Spin City UK. I also purchased one for myself, as you do, but because I was kind of like a newbie-ish spinner, I kept dropping the spindle. And if you're not familiar, uh, her spindles are made of resin so it's like a clear plastic and she puts like dried flowers glitter and decoupages uh everything inside of them and yeah unfortunately i dropped it one too many times and the plastic broke unfortunately it was tragic i was heartbroken um but yeah fast forward five years later i stopped by the booth louise she said she felt so bad that my spindle broke she changed her formula for what she was making her spindles with and so generously uh offered uh to let me pick um a spindle and take it home with me and i i, I was really really taken aback by that so louise if you were watching thank you thank you so much um i did take a gander at her spindles and it was really really hard to choose but this one completely stood out to me and i could not resist 
I posted a photo of this on my Instagram feed and I think I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Marie Antoinette and it's just a little cut out of Marie Antoinette surrounded by glitter and you know because I was going to France it was just I could not resist. So Louise, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, that was super kind of you and I cannot wait to take this for a spin. Um, and amazingly, it transported very well. Um, granted, I did sandwich it in between a lot of yarn. Um, so I think that helped, but yeah, it held up through flying from Edinburgh to Paris and then from Paris back to New York. Yeah, clearly very well made. So anyway, really excited for this, but you know, being in that booth surrounded by all that fiber, I could not resist. Um, granted this got a little bit rough and tumbly in my luggage, uh, and consequently the sparkle got everywhere, but you know, glitter makes everything better. I could not resist. I could not resist. And you guys, I am actually having a peach moment. You'll, you'll notice the peach theme throughout my, my yarn haul, uh, that I'm going to share with you. Uh, but yeah, it's just got some golds, yellows, um, peach, grays, and blacks, and I had to take it home with me. Um, yeah, and it's just a spinning bat. I'm not sure exactly what the fiber content is. There was there was no tag. Maybe there was a tag, but it fell off. I'm pretty sure it fell off um, in transit. But uh, I think there's some silk noil in here. Let me see. Yeah, there's some uh, Stellina or Angelina, um, some silk noil, and I think just some really yummy, uh, definitely not, definitely not superwash merino. Um, it, it could be, it could be, but it definitely feels very sheepy. I, there might even be a little bit of cashmere in here. I don't know, but it's so floofy and glittery and it just had to come home with me. So I broke a rule, fiber came home with me, a drop spindle came home with me. I couldn't help it, so sue me. This might have been day three, two or three. Uh, it, 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 I think it was, this was Edinburgh day two, where it was just kind of a free-for-all. So like the first day, I pretty much took everything in, did the rounds, saw what was available, if anything really stuck out at me, you know, I of course took it home, you know, purchased it. Um, but the second day, I just, you know, I went for it. I just, <laughs> as you do with these things sometimes. Uh, and you know, whoever wanted to enable me, I let enable me. I don't know. I, I have no shame sometimes. And um, yeah, Caroline, Caroline, she she is, you know, if, if you want to be enabled, she's a good sh shopping buddy to have with you. Um, so she totally talked me into this. I mean, it wasn't, it's not like she had to twist my arm or anything. I saw it and I was like, hey, I'm, it's coming home with me. So uh, this is Walcott Yarns, their Opus base. And it might, you might have recognized it on her podcast and on Ellie Skandir. Uh, Skandir actually knit the hay pullover, and I'm blanking on who designed it, but it's from one of the Lena, uh, the Lena magazines. Um, but yeah, this yarn is so scrummy. I bought five skeins of it. I believe it is sport weight, according to Ravelry, in their summer storm colorway, and it is 70% Falkland Merino, 30% Baby Alpaca, and 100% awesome. Uh, so it is th this really kind of like dark grayish purple mauve color, of course. Um, and yeah, I have, I don't know what exactly it's going to become, but you know, it, it, I just, I love their packaging too. The, the graphic design behind their labels and everything is just so lovely. So I bought a sweater. Ugh, I just bit my tongue. Ow. <laughs> Anyway, um, I bought five skeins of these and there's about, let me see, 325 meters, 355 yards, 100 grams per skein. I could definitely get a sweater out of this. I already kind of um, added some sweaters to my queue. A couple of Elizabeth, um, a couple of Isabel Kramer uh, pullovers. So, you know, a couple of options that I'm throwing around right now. So that was an awesome purchase. Also from Edinburgh Yarn Festival day two, uh, <laughs> Caroline also enabled me to make this purchase uh, from, I'm gonna, I went to I went to France and I'm totally gonna butcher this, but uh, Bichet and Boucher. Yes, this is Bichet and Boucher, uh, Le Petit Lamb's Wool, uh, and in their very, very dark gray colorway, as you can see, but it's, it's more like kind of, I wanna say like a dark, black heather 
I want to say like a warm dark black heather it's really beautiful but yes this is 100% uh, pure lamb's wool from Scotland and it is so squishy so soft and scrummy and I need I need a black cardigan in my life and I think uh, this is what it's going to become so I bought five skeins of this um, and a little story behind this is when I saw this colorway at the booth they only had maybe like four, three or four skeins and I needed maybe like two more extra skeins to make a sweaters quantity and apparently the ladies working at the booth said that there wasn't any more left, they were sold out, so I sadly declined on purchasing them because, you know, if I wasn't going to be able to make a sweater out of it, you know. Um, but later on that day I walked by and they had more there and I was like, oh my gosh, and the, the, the lovely lady at the booth said they actually had an extra bag under the table that they didn't realize that they had. Um, so, you know, that was really lucky, and as soon as I saw it, I, of course, swiped it up. I think I was probably going to go back and just get the skeins anyway, because I was thinking I really I really need a, a lace, a black lace wool shawl um, in my life. So, I don't know. Either way, I probably would have come home with a skein or two of these, regardless. Um, so, yeah, that was another purchase uh, that Caroline enabled me to purchase. She's like, you have to knit with this yarn. It is just so awesome. And yeah, I can't, I can't wait to cast it on. So this might be the second purchase that I made at EYF, uh, day one. And I, this is from the Ushashita booth, uh, who by the way is one of my favorite dyers. Her work is just so incredible and it, her colorways just speak to my soul. <sighs> She's definitely I don't know, one of the most talented hand dyers out there that, you know, every time I see her yarns, I always, I can't not come away with something. And she had this new yarn line out. I don't think it's a, I might be wrong. Maybe it's out right now, but I think she debuted this uh, base at the, at EYF. Um, but this is her minimal base. And here is the colorway that I purchased. Um, and it's 100% Highland wool, mule, uh, mulesing free, non-superwash in her Factum colorway. So I got three, three skeins of this. Yeah. And it's just like this very dark, variegated, moody, brownish gray mauve. I don't, it's, I think it's, it might be a sport to DK weight, maybe a fingering. I don't know. It's a mystery. But anyway, I, I could not leave without it, so I bought three skeins. I can definitely get a sweater out of this. It is 100 grams per skein, 383 yards, 350 meters per skein. So, love it. Next up, we have yarn from Ovis Etc. And I could not resist this color, <laughs> this color palette right here. Um, yeah, clearly, clearly in influenced by Caroline. Um, so we have, this is uh, their Wensleydale. So it's 100% Wensleydale. I don't know, I think it, I, it might just be fingering to lace weight, I think. Um, but 100 grams for skiing, 350 meters, 383 yards, 100% uh, Wensleydale in their cabin colorway. This is pebble, but let's face it, it's more of like a leafy sea glass green. Leafy sea glass green, I, that, I don't, whatever. It's, it's that kind of color. Um, and then this is just a really beautiful, um, kind of like warm, dark gray. It's uh, geode dark. So obviously this is going to become like a color work something. I don't know what, but it came home with me and it's very, it's very, it has a really nice halo to it. Um, it has a little bit of tooth to it, but at the same time, it's very soft and I know it's just going to be something super warm. So this might be a really nice kind of color work cowl or shawl. Next up, uh, this was from EYF day three. Why you should even care what day I purchased these, I don't know, but just in case you were wondering for my own reference, um, this is from Skein Queen. Uh, this was actually Debbie's very last show. She is no longer going to be dying, but is having, um, I believe one of her employees, uh, continuing the the tradition of Skein Queen um, and continuing to dye the same colorways and everything. Uh, so it was really great to see Debbie and show her the shawl that I knit with the yarn that I purchased from last year's EYF. I believe it was her Mountain Heather colorway. Uh, and I was going to buy some more of that colorway, but then I saw, I saw these two skeins. Again, peach, 
peach is working its way into my soul, into my life. Um, because I guess it could kind of be mauve, but it's not. And I feel like coral is having a moment right now and gray and coral together is just something that is inspiring me at the moment. So yeah, I've just been kind of gravitating towards some corally peaches, if that makes any sense. Um, but yeah, this is her Surrey Alpaca. Uh, this is cl her, cl her blah, 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 Cloud Gazer Base, which is 74% baby Surrey Alpaca, 28% mulberry silk, lace weight, uh, and of course, as if that wasn't soft enough, um, this is her Enchant, which is 70% baby alpaca and 20% silk and 10% cashmere. I mean, these two together are just gonna be like one giant baby buttered kitten, whatever it becomes. Um, they just, I had to get them together. Um, yeah, so who knows, who knows? Uh, but yeah, so they, they don't have a name, so I don't know what color exactly they are, but it is like a corally peach and they make me happy. So they came home with me. Next up is a yarn dyer that is, I, I saw them at last year's EYF, but they are new to me and I know I can't easily get them in the US, if at all, uh, but I saw this colorway and <laughs> had to come home with me. Uh, and this is Martin's, Martin's Lab, and he does some really, really, really awesome uh, tonals. Uh, he has some speckles as well, but this was just something that I could not resist. It's like a very, it's gray, but a dark, again, these dark, warm, like lavender grays really make my heart sing. And this is his DK base. Let me see, Tibetan DK. So it's 60% um, Superwash Merino, 20% Silk, and 20% Yak in the Ash colorway. And I purchased, uh, five? Yeah. Five skeins of this. I don't know what it's become, but it's, I don't know what it's going to become, but it's going to become a sweater, of course, because I got five skeins. Um, and I ended up chatting to this really lovely, uh, lady inside the booth, and, you know, we were talking, she mentioned that she's from Poland, and, and I started talking about how I used to live in Greenpoint, which it has a really large Polish community, and there was so much Polish food, like pierogies, and the food is amazing, and anyway, uh, we got into chatting about that a little bit, and then... After I uh, went to go to purchase this yarn, I saw a pattern book with the Tide Knots hat that I knit a couple months back uh, by Justina Larowska. And I looked at the pattern and then I'm like, wait a second. The lady who I was just talking to looked ex exactly like that. So I turned to her, I was like, are you Justina? And she said, yeah. And I'm like, oh, I had no idea. And I reached into my bag and pulled out my hat <laughs> to show her. And I was like, I am so sorry. I totally did not put two and two together. Like, it's so funny because people in photographs and online, I feel like the camera does weird things, not weird things, but you get a different perspective of people on camera versus in person. So it took me a while to put two and two together. I don't know. Am I the only one with this? Do you guys, does that happen to you? I don't know, but uh, yeah, it was just really funny and surreal, and it was just so great getting to chat with her and uh, show her my my hat that I knit, and she really does design amazing patterns, and I have a couple of hers, her other patterns in my in my queue, or ones that I want to knit, um, but Justina, I doubt you're watching this, but it was great chatting with you, um, and you, if you ever find yourself in Greenpoint, Brooklyn, hit me up, we will get pierogies, um, and some really awesome Greenpoint Polish food. Uh, yeah. This is also from day one. Uh, I stopped by the Wensleydale Longwool booth, and yeah, again, Wensleydale is working its way into my stash. It's it's a really, again, toothy but soft yarn. It's I wanna say it's very close to alpaca, but not as heavy and drapey, I wanna say. Um, but yeah, I purchased a sweater's quantity of Wensleydale long wool, and as the name suggests, it's 100% pure new wool, um, and it's 100 grams iron weight yarn, and I think this wants to become a fern and feather by Jennifer Steingass. And of course, uh, these do not have creative names. They it, it is shade number 111, and then this one is shade number 102, which is again I'm also drawn to like this kind of sea glass green um, light shade and it kind of reminiscent of the uh the da, 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 da. what did i knit recently the ingles pullover by caitlin hunter kind of the same color scheme going on so i purchased five skeins of um 
of this and then one skein of this for the color work. And yeah, I think there's enough in here for that. So 140, 174 yards per skein. Um, and yeah, the price point wasn't too bad either. It was about eight pounds, um, which I think equates to about maybe $10 US. Uh, so yeah, not bad and it feels really, really yummy. So who knows what this will become, but I'm guessing a fern and feather by Jennifer Steingas. Um, yeah, so that is another purchase that I made. And then Countess Ablaze. Uh, this was her first uh, yarn festival, I believe. She did, uh, she had a booth there for the very first time. Uh, I saw her roaming around last year and I <laughs> totally fangirled. I went up to her and I said, hello, and then like ran away, scampered off. Um, as you do sometimes uh, when you fangirl uh, over, over people you admire. Uh, and respect. Uh, so, but this year I was so excited to see that she had a booth. It was an amazing, awesome booth. And uh, I, I'm so proud of myself because you guys, I made a fade. I made a fade. Um, it all came together so nicely. And ooh, there's some thread on there, but uh, are you not surprised? Are you not surprised? It is a mauve fade. It is, um, this is her uh, Lady Persephone sock yarn uh, in her let me see. The Unwanted. No, The Unwanteds. And then this one is uh, The Dispossessed. And then this dark kind of brownish mauve is uh, Brave New World. And here is her thing. So because they are a fade, I think these will become a Pierre shawl by Stephen West, who was also there. It was really awesome to get to see him again. <laughs> if you don't recall, I, I did a class with him at Do You Knit uh, for my birthday back in January. And then it was, it's so, it's so wild getting to see people in different places, parts of the world for yarn festivals. It's, uh, yeah, I can't, I, I really can't. It, it's, it's so surreal guys. I don't know, but it was so great to see him and say hello. Um, so yeah, he was there and where was I going with this? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm probably gonna knit a Pierre shawl out of this because it is kind of fady. Although I do think it calls for an extra skein of yarn for colors, uh, but I feel like I can make it work with just, with just three. We'll see, we'll see. Um, so yeah, that was one purchase and then I couldn't resist, I couldn't resist picking up one of these. Uh, she, Countess of Blaze does these uh, blind date mystery, but it says, uh, blind date, tall, dark, and handsome, quietly dominant, happy to spend my knitting time alone, but enjoy good company and wine as well as stimulating intellectual pursuits. <sighs> Couldn't resist this blind date. So yeah, um, I originally thought that it would be kind of like a mixed bag of mini skeins or odds and ends and, uh, but no, it's actually a full skein of yarn. And I think it's kind of like her one-offs, one of a kind colorways. And I was pleasantly surprised to find this inside of it. It's just a really awesome lime teal green and it's just, ah, it's kind of a cool colorway. I don't know, I really like it. Um, so this is uh, Tia Merino. I think this is her 100% Superwash Merino single, single ply base. And yeah, it doesn't have a name. It's just blind date and it's green. And then I stopped off at the Knitting Goddess booth uh, because she, I didn't, for some reason I didn't purchase anything from her last year, uh, but she has some really, really awesome stuff, uh, really beautiful colorways. She also is responsible for those, um, you know, cheeky little project bags that say stuff like, I like a good fingering, <laughs> meaning the yarn, but could totally be implying something else. Um, yeah, yeah, she does those. Uh, so yeah, I picked up this gradient set I don't, it, it's, it was just so pretty. It's not mauve, it's actually just a, sh a, a rainbow of brown, brown mini skeins, and you can actually knit a gradient shawl. She has a pattern that you can knit with it. And yeah, so Knitting Goddess. And here is her logo. There's that. And yeah, I thought it was just a really fun thing to have in my stash because you, you can't go wrong with, with a gradient set. Uh, so I picked up that. And then last but not least, I stopped off at the Lobby Anime booth and she, a Amy had, she killed it this year. Her booth was just so incredible. Uh, I can't believe that they assembled all those shelves for just, you know, four days of yarny awesomeness. Uh, yeah, it was just a really incredible booth. and. Uh, she did not disappoint, and I could not resist coming away with some yarn that she debuted at the festival. Um, and this is a collaboration she did with uh, Rosa Pomar, uh, who has the Mondi Mon Mondim 
line, and I've seen her yarns, uh, the Mondim base, so this is, so this is the Mondim logo, which is super cute. So I've seen this yarn floating around some podcasts, and she creates these really beautiful hand-dyed, um, sock yarns and everything, and, uh, La Bienna May did a collaboration with her. So um, it's just 100% Portuguese wool uh, with, dyed in La Bienna May colorways, and I could not resist. It's really kind of like toothy fingering weight yarn, uh, which technically it could be anything, honestly. It feels like, you know, like a really good sock yarn, but it could also be a really, really lovely sweater, which is what I'm intending for this yarn. Um, and <laughs> I purchased for four skeins of it because I want it to be a sweater. Yeah, so I purchased two skeins of this. Hang on, let me get all of them. So again, this corally peach is making an appearance into my stash or, you know, into my life. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what it is, but um, yeah, I'm having a very corally peach moment as you can clearly see. So this is called Dawn. This is her Dawn colorway. So I got two skeins of her undergrowth colorway. And this last one is uh, pink granite, which is just, yeah, like a pinkish gray mauve, gorgeous skein of gorgeousness. I can't talk today as usual, guys. So I think this is going to become a Caitlin Hunter pattern. Uh, I cannot remember the name of it off the top of my head right now, but I will pop it in the down bar or in the sidebar uh, so you know what I'm talking about. But I think this will have to, be, have to be the main color, and then these two will be the contrasting colors, and call it a day, because I don't have enough Caitlin Hunter sweaters in my life at the moment. I don't think. You can never have too many. Okay, so this might have been my very last EYF purchase <laughs> that I made, uh, and I could not resist, because I, I really do love me some pink hazel uh, project bags. Uh, however, I realized I do have quite a bit of project bags at the moment. I do not need any more, but she did have other things that caught my eye. So as I mentioned previously, uh, her, anything that she makes is just so incredibly well made and you can tell like she pays atten like such great attention to detail with anything. Um, and I was actually in the market for a needle case that I could keep on my desk. I have a, an accordion file of all my circular knitting needles, but I really wanted something that I could just keep on my desk with needles that I frequently use, like needle sizes. I generally use US size fours through sixes, quite often, and so I was definitely in the market for a new needle case, and this one had to come home with me. I just love the color scheme, clearly, because it's, it's just, yeah. There was another print that she had uh, in, a, in another, I think it was in a project bag, but not in a needle case, so, uh, but this had the same kind of color scheme going on, so I, I jumped on it. Uh, so yeah, it's just, it's almost like a clutch. You could even, it can even double as a clutch, I want to say. Not just a needle case, if you're feeling experimental, but it opens out to, to this. So, I think it opens like that, yeah. So it has like all these really cool compartments in it, and yeah, you can just fold up your, your knitting needles, and this opens up, and you know, keep all your tips from pointing through, and it's just so incredibly well made. Um, so there's her logo, and yeah, it's yeah. If you ha ever have, a, if you ever get the opportunity to get your mitts on a pink hazel something, rather, totally worth it. Uh, they are they are a little pricey. I'm not gonna lie, but it's just so worth the quality and the work and craftsmanship that go into all of her makes. Um, so I I did not regret purchasing this at all, and it was just so lovely getting to chat with her again. So hi. I don't know if you're watching. Um, I know I'm saying hello to a bunch of people. I don't know if you, you're watching, but if you are, hello. So I feel like this was a great way to cap off my EYF purchases uh, and can't wait to start using it. It's just gonna look so pretty sitting on my desk and you know, just remind me every time I look at it of, of Edinburgh Yarn Festival 2019. So uh, yeah. That is my EYF haul, my friends. Uh, I am very gluttonous, you know, what can I say? And uh, I am sorry, not sorry, uh, because as I mentioned, it all brings me joy. I have some happy memories from this year's festival and yeah, I cannot wait to see what they grow up to be. And um, yeah, it was just, it was just such a wonderful, wonderful experience uh, getting, again, getting to hang out with all the people. And you know, after every day, I feel like 
pretty much every night at the fe after the festival, we all hung out. Uh, someone was always having a get together at their place. Uh, Caroline had a get together at her Airbnb, um, and we all just brought snacks and drinks over. Um, and then the following night, Ellie uh, and her flatmates were having a party over at her Airbnb, and again the same thing. Um, and we just had so much fun, uh, and you know we we're all tired and getting silly and rambunctious, you know, but. What, you know, when in Rome, guys, you know? So anyway, it was just really, and as I mentioned, it was just so great getting to hang out with Caroline and getting to spend time with her and getting to know her more. Caroline, if you're watching, you're awesome. And I miss, I miss everyone. I miss everyone, you guys. Um, and unfortunately, there were people that I got to see briefly, uh, but didn't get to spend much time with and I am really kicking myself for not being able to spend as much time as I wanted with or even meet people that I had wanted to meet. Um, I, I saw Isabel from Fluffy Fibers very very briefly. Um, it was just such a whirlwind as these things usually are and I only got like a few moments to hug her and chat with her so Isabel if you're watching big hugs to you. It was great getting to see you again and I you know again only wish we had more time to chat. Um, so, and then there was uh, Sophia and Dennis from Camemboria, who, if you don't watch their podcast, you guys, oh my gosh, it's subtitled. They put so much work and effort into each episode. Uh, I think they put out an episode once a month, uh, but they subtitle everything, and they're just so chill to watch. Um, you know, even if they're just in the background while I'm, you know, putzing around my craft room or knitting. It's just so relaxing to have them just kind of chilling, hanging out and talking um, on the podcast. And I love how they have a thing, like whenever whenever they talk about something, they just say, isn't that lovely? It's just so lovely. <laughs> so anyway, their podcast is very lovely and I really regret not being able to meet up with them and say hello and let them know how much I enjoy their podcast. So if you guys are watching, which I don't think that you are, but if you are, um, yeah, I, I'm so sorry we didn't have a chance to catch up um, and say hello. Uh, and then there was Andrea and Andrew from Fruity Knitting. I didn't get to chat with them this year, but I did a little bit last year, uh, but I did see them roaming around. Uh, who else? I got to meet Kat and White. Uh, oh goodness, I'm totally blanking on your your first name. Um, but it was so lovely getting to meet her in person. She has the uh, Cat and White podcast completely spoken in German. Uh, I love dipping into her podcast occasionally to kind of, you know, I, I have grand plans to learn German someday, uh, you know, but, but anyway, it's kind of hard to work into my schedule at the moment, but occasionally I like to dip in and catch up on her podcast and just hear her speak in German and show off all the beautiful things that she's working on. She has such a lovely aesthetic, um, and we did get to meet, you know, very briefly, say hello, hug, and get a photo together, um, so I will post a link to her podcast as well. Um, I also got to meet Emily from Viola Yarns, uh, and of course it was the day that I was not wearing my Tengya pullover that I knit out of her yarns that has been getting so much wear this trip. Um, I have to actually give it a wash uh, at some point today because it got so much love over over my trip. Um, it just, her, that colorway just goes with everything in my wardrobe, uh, which is kind of why I gravitated towards a lot of warm grays this trip. Um, but yeah, I got to meet Emily. She's so sweet. And Emily, if, I don't know if you're watching, but yeah, it was really great to meet you. I totally fangirled and geeked out. And, um, yeah, I just, it was just so great meeting everybody. Um, who else? Kim from Kim Smith Happy was there. She was great. It was great getting to see her. She got the most adorable, amazing tattoo over the trip. Um, it's just like cats and pumpkins and yeah, Kim, it was really awesome getting to hang out with you. Um, Mars from Hey Brown Berry. I didn't get to chat with her very much, but you know, we hung out and had fun doing, uh, the spare spit, the, 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 the spare stitch project, um, that we, the, Caroline's April Fool's joke video, which again, go check it out because it is hilarious. And we had so much fun collaborating on that and putting that all together. And, um, yeah, so definitely, definitely, definitely check that out. Um, and what else? Grace, Grace from Babbles Travels. Oh, yeah, she she's just truly amazing. And I was planning to go, Grace was organizing a trip up Arthur's seat, uh, which is something that I wanted to do and I was planning on doing it, but then I chickened out at the last minute. Um, I was just so, so knackered from the previous day and I was just like, I 
I just need the morning, you know, and I was, yeah. So I, I bailed on the Arthur's, um, on the Arthur's seat hike. Anyway, I'm totally rambling at this point. Um, I did manage to swing by La Vienne May in, when I was in Paris, France, um, because you know when you're in, when you're in France, you have to visit La Bienname. There were a bunch of other uh, yarn shops that a lot of you recommended that I stop by. Unfortunately, we just didn't have enough time. But I did make it my priority to swing by La Bienname because I, I you have to you have to. I was a little surprised. It's a lot smaller than I imagined, but it might be small. It is tiny but mighty. Uh, and yeah, it's just such a sweet little shop and I was so glad that I was able to make it there. Um, I didn't get to spend too much time there because I had Dennis in tow and uh, he was being very patient and um, you know, I couldn't leave without without buying something from there. Uh, so I came <laughs> as if I needed, as if I needed more La Viena May in my life. Um, you know, why not? So I came away with this skein of yarn. This one just kind of jumped out at me as, as you shouldn't be so surprised that it did. Um, and this is her drag, uh, Drogon colorway. And I'm sure it's inspired by Game of Thrones and it's so subtle, but there are, it's kind of like this dark gray purple with little pops of magenta in there. And yeah, it's just super pretty. So, you know, can never have too many Merino singles in your stash. Uh, it's definitely something that I don't know, maybe I'll make a fade, finally. Maybe I'll make, maybe I will finally make a so faded pullover. It's been on my queue in my Ravelry library for quite some time, and I think it might be high time for me to cast one on using this colorway. I don't know, we shall see. But um, I also came away with Lina, uh, number seven, uh, because, you know, I needed, I needed literature on, on my trip back. And yeah, very happy that I came away with this. And I also bought a needle gauge, which is in my project bag downstairs, but it's one of her, um, laser cut Labby Anime needle gauges, because I feel like I don't have enough needle gauges in my life as well. Um, I'm always looking for my nitpicks one. So, you know, it might, help to have a needle gauge, another one floating around my craft room because yeah, things are sometimes hard to find. Uh, so yeah, really glad that I made it there. Uh, and yeah, France was really fun. I am probably going to talk more about that in the next episode. Uh, but I will try and pop some footage from EYF at the end of this episode. Again, I failed at vlogging or if I, I did try and do some vlogging, but consistency was not there. It was just, I was having so much fun talking with people, enjoying being in the moment and surrounding myself with fiber and yarn and just taking it all in and just being really present. Um, but from what footage that I do have in photos, I will try and put something together <laughs> uh, for you to enjoy. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think that is it for, for the episode. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, uh, for this very, very special episode, uh, vlog of my Edinburgh Yarn Festival haul. I would really love to go back next year. I'm hoping I can make it happen. Um, fingers crossed, making no promises, but I feel like every year I just, I, I, I leave with the warm and fuzzies and do not regret going at all. So if you, if you are thinking about going, I highly recommend it. It is just, it is such a blast. Yeah, I think I'm going to end things there. I feel like this episode is going on for way too long. So yeah, thank you so much again for hanging out with me. Uh, if you enjoyed this and want to keep up to date with my other videos, uh, feel free to like and subscribe below. I generally put on a new episode every Friday. Uh, so yeah, uh, I will see you next time. Happy knitting. Bye. <laughs>
Edinburgh, day three is coming to a close. It's the final countdown. One more hour left. And I'm with this lot right here. Hey guys. Hey. Caroline's finishing her sweater. Oh, She's on the ribbing of the cuff. She can do it. You can do it. I can do it. She can do it. Working on it. She can do it. Go, 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 go. <laughs> anyway, having a really, really awesome time. I'm so sad it's gonna be over. I have my knitting. I have some coffee. And there's gonna be some partying happening after. And I can't wait. Yay! How are you doing, Grace? I'm She's fine. Delirious. <laughs> and she she led a hike this morning. Oh, oh, but yeah. my injury of EYF has been I've pulled my back from taking too many selfies. Yes. The struggle's real. The struggle's real. Yes. And Caroline finished her jumper. It's awesome and amazing. Thank you. Yes. <laughs>